friends. I'm your host, Dr. Dave Layton, and thank you for joining me in our journey to hope. It is my desire through this podcast to bring you information about how to discover, sustain, or perhaps regain hope. In this episode, we'll be speaking with Lisa Rose. Her job title is Patient Advocate Volunteer Coordinator for the Montgomery Cancer Center. Hello, Lisa. Hey, how you doing? Well, tell our audience a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do in this very important role. Sure. So I grew up in uh, Alabama, born in Birmingham, uh, went to school at University of Montevallo, uh, ended up right after school, after college, um, being appointed as a missionary to New York City, which I stayed in for 16 years and moved back to the Alabama, to Alabama, um, 2006 and worked for the Montgomery Baptist Association as the community ministries director there. In 2019, uh, the Lord sought to just give me a job change and uh, the opportunity opened up here at the Montgomery Cancer Center to work with volunteers and uh, would be helping patients just to navigate through the, their journey here. And so I've been here four years and uh, it has been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Okay, I heard a couple of things in your intro about yourself, but what do you think best prepared you for this role? Oh, goodness, probably every, everything <laughs> I've done. Um, I think, you know, the biggest thing is my uh, opportunity I had in New York City to work with people who um, either were in a difficult situation, um, you know, either substance abuse or uh, life crises, some people with health issues. Um, and basically, I walked beside them and was an advocate for them, kind of maneuvering the system, whatever system they were in. Okay. So here's an Alabama girl up yes. in New York. Yes. Wow. Big change. It, it was, listen, it was the best learning experience ever for sure. me. So you said you've been our coordinator now for four years. That's correct. Oh, and by the way, she's she's the volunteer coordinator, and I've talked on different podcasts where I'm also a volunteer, so she's my boss. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> well, um, so you've been for four years. Yes, four years. that's right. And and actually, this position has evolved. Uh, when I first got here, it was mainly uh, talking to patients about any concerns they had about their experience here. But now uh, we are part of my position now is to work with our patients who don't uh, speak English as their first language. Sure. And so I work with them, offer language services for them, walk beside them in their uh, treatment time. And, you know, it can be scary, especially when you don't know the language. Uh, it, English is not your first language, and um, it can be overwhelming. Yeah. You know, in, in the time that I've been a volunteer, there's been one occasion where we had a young lady coming in for care that mm -hmm. uh, Spanish was her right. primary language. And uh, I knew a little bit of Spanish, and, and but I enjoyed interacting with yes. her. And, and I can see where that would yes. be a very valuable experience. Yes. We don't think about it, you know. But, yeah, folks need care, yeah, regardless of the language. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, and, and it's important that we're meeting their needs. Okay, great. Well, describe for us then a little bit more about what a typical day looks like. Okay. Uh, if there is such a thing as <laughs> I was going to say, which day do you want me to Well, typically uh, when I come in, um, I get our volunteers settled. We have two shifts of volunteers at both of our locations. Um, I get them settled, get them going into their whatever positions they work in the, for that day. Um, I may have some uh, inter interpretive service patients come in where I need to be with them. So I, I may spend several hours with that patient going from uh, registration all the way through a doctor visit, possibly uh, treatment, and just being beside them and helping them with interpretation. Uh, then I get to come back to my desk and do a little paperwork. So, but I, you know, it's, that's generally how my day may look. Um, but as you said, like, it just depends on the day. We may have an event here. We may have uh, a large donation of snacks come in. Um, and so uh, de just depending on what that day is, I'm involved in either patient uh, interpreter interpretive services or helping our volunteers with their job. Okay. Um, so 
you're very hands-on in this position. Absolutely. And and not not so much that we volunteers need a whole lot of uh, hands-on to because right. uh, it is a vote a, a very motivated yes. group. But yeah, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and I understand that. Yeah. And uh, I always enjoy the little newsletter you send out to us, the schedule, things mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, so that's always enjoyable. Okay. Um, so what kind of activities do volunteers perform? Sure. Uh, well, as you know, basically our number one goal when that patient walks in the door is to help them navigate whatever services they're using that day. It may be um, helping them get from one place to the next. It may help them, you know, get signed in at our kiosk. It may be giving them a snack if they're hungry or sometimes just sitting and listening. Yeah. Um, to whatever they want to share and so basically um, I feel like our volunteers are our ambassadors uh, and uh, for care and um, so there are some definitely some diff, uh, specific tasks that our volunteers perform but for me you know my goal is to ha have all of our volunteers be that ambassador that representative and someone who can just sit and listen if needed you know, it, it it's a joy for me as a volunteer to look at the contented expression on someone's face when I wrap them in a warm blanket. Yes. And and uh, that that's always a joy. And, yeah, sometimes just sit there and chat with them. Yeah. Sometimes you have to be uh, a, a little bit on the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you'll see a patient that might be struggling with walking, and, and, and we help out with that. Uh, I think about the times I've seen somebody that – we had to help out of their vehicle mm -hmm. into a wheelchair That's and then into the treatment yes. chair. Yes, yes. Oh, I tell you, you know, you get to know the patients, and I'm speaking from my own experience. Yes. And, and you just get to love them. Absolutely. I, just wonderful folks. I think one of the neatest parts of our volunteers' jobs, as you just mentioned, is because many of our patients come on the same day of the week for their treatment each week, um, our volunteers on those certain days get to know the same people Mm -hmm. each time and you do develop a relationship and you know it's difficult you know we want to rejoice with them when they finish their treatment sometimes we mourn because yes. they may have passed away yes. and um and so uh it is it can be uh a challenge sometimes emotionally but i think the bigger picture is that there's just more joy yeah. in their our volunteers experience than difficulty yeah and i, I tell them when we're getting a new patient oriented, I tell them, hi, I'm Dave Layton. My job is to make this the best day you're going to have. Yes. And you yes. Know, whatever they need. But, you know, there's something else that I take a lot of joy in is helping the care provider. Oh, yeah. When that when that care provider is there, uh, you know, what do you need? How yeah. can I help you? Yes. Helping them out. It's, yeah. it's just a joy. Okay, I'm talking about me and my yeah. experiences. I'm sorry. I'm, well, no, I think you know. I think for both of us, we're you know we've both experienced that, and that, and what you're echoing is what I hear many times over from each of our volunteers. Um, there have been many a time when um, they have uh, our volunteers have had an experience where with the caregiver. Um, or with the patient where their, their situations are similar. Um, quite a few of our volunteers have either had cancer or had a spouse with cancer yes. or, you know, a close family member. And so they understand the challenges that come with that. Mm -hmm. And for a patient or a caregiver just to hear, I, I understand where you're coming from, yeah. is a huge relief to both the caregiver and patient. It is. Again, you know, they're, they're just part of that whole care process and mm -hmm. so they're part of that team well when we first met and uh, i came in and talked to you about being a volunteer we we had uh talked about my experiences and and i mentioned that i wanted to be a volunteer because of the love and compassion that was shared with me and uh you know that i had received from the folks so what are some of the comments that you hear mm -hmm. from other people talking about volunteers? Well, another part of my job is that I receive all of our patient surveys. Oh, okay. After That they fill out after their visit. Okay. And more times than not, uh, each day that I receive them, 
Uh, there's something good about our volunteers. People have said things like their smiles. You know, they met me with a smile. It was my first time. I was overwhelmed. The lady in the vest, <laughs> you know, our volunteers wear vests. Uh, the lady in the vest just put on a big smile and helped me through the process. Or someone may say, um, you know, I remember one comment a few years ago where uh, one of our volunteers whose husband had uh, had a similar cancer to this particular patient, uh, they mentioned that this volunteer really helped them understand the process that they were about to go through with their spouse. And so it just brought, you know, she said it, it took a burden off of my shoulders to know that someone else had been through my experience that I was about to have. Okay. That actually happened to me the mm -hmm. other day. There was a lady that came in that had the same form of leukemia that uh -huh. I had. And, oh, yeah, it was great to sit down with her. And, and, yeah. and I said, well, here's some of the things you're going to experience. And then I said, you see that bell hanging on that wall over yeah. there? You're going to get to ring that yes. bell. Yes, yes. may take you a few months, but you're going to get yes. to do it. And, yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, um, it, it's just it's not about us it's about them that's right but we receive some joy from it as well absolutely we truly do absolutely well this podcast focuses on hope um, and and so how do you think volunteers help people mm. that you know this is perhaps um, first time in someone's life so many times mm -hmm. that they've been challenged mm -hmm. to this level to have their hope challenged yes and so um, it's scary for a lot of people. And so how do we as volunteers, from your perspective, how do we help that person regain or sustain hope? Sure. And I think just as I mentioned before, I think one of the really neat things, you know, I would say probably three-fourths of our volunteer force at both Montgomery and Prattville um, have had an experience very close to them with cancer, either themselves or someone else close to them. Mm -hmm. And I think more than not that to hear stories like yours uh, where you've made it, in a sense. And, um, and oh, by the way, my anniversary, or excuse me, yeah. my cancer anniversary is cancer coming up. There you go. Uh, October 27th well, will hallelujah. be a year hallelujah. of cancer-free. Hallelujah. And, and so, you, well, and so, so just like with that, to be able to say something like that to a patient does give them hope that, Maybe, just maybe, this is going to be for them, too. Yeah. And um, the other thing, and in fact, I heard a volunteer talking to a patient not too long ago, and she was saying, um, telling this patient that that her own cancer, it took a while for treatment to work. Uh, and she never thought she was going to get to the end, but she did. And um, And so I think that, again, just having somebody there who's been through it uh, has made a world of difference in giving people hope. But also, even those who may have a different ending to their cancer journey um, can still find hope. And one of our volunteers shares all the time, her husband's passed away from cancer, and she shares all the time how that cancer journey um, changed her husband. Yeah. And though he went on to be with the Lord, um, he was a changed person before he died. Yeah. And uh, that he, ha he, he had mentioned to, to our volunteer that um, his life was much deeper and more fulfilled even be because of cancer. Yeah. And that's hard to fathom when you're in the beginning stage yeah. of treatment. Um, but I believe, and I've seen, and I'm sure you've experienced, um, our volunteers over and over again have said that their own lives, if they've experienced it, they've been changed for the better is what oh, they say. Absolutely. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, and, and that kind of leads me into the next thing I want to chat about with you. In my research about hope and uh, in writing about it and talking with mm -hmm. people about it, uh, one way in which we improve hope and keep hope alive is to look outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And volunteering gives us a, not just a chance to look outside of ourselves, yeah. but something that we are, if we've been a former cancer patient mm -hmm. or something, we know um, yeah. some of the fears and challenges. And so uh, it really is um, helping us focus on others, and that that's a benefit to us yeah, as well. 
And so uh, your thoughts on that again. Uh, oh, I couldn't agree more. You know, I think that applies to anything. It does. Um, when we get outside of ourselves and think about others and helping others, it really puts our life in perspective. Um, you know, many times, even when I was in New York City working uh, for the little church I worked at, um, so much of my life, I, I went there when I was 23, so okay. green, never been out of Alabama. Two years ago. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Um, you know, didn't have a worldview of anything. Okay. And as I worked with people who were homeless, people who are struggling with addiction, people who had long-term health issues, family issues, it really put my life in perspective because it's real easy to get very focused on ourselves and our problems. There's something else out there that's either bigger than us or, you know, it gives us perspective. I'll give you an example. Just this morning, um, my son who has autism, uh, we were having some challenges with his getting him some housing. And I was just, I had just gotten some difficult news about the journey with that yesterday and I came to work this morning I was really in a bad mood <laughs> and probably That's within the hour yeah. because of my experience here with a couple of patients this morning it just changed my perspective yeah. and it it yeah. got me guess what I feel better about the situation yeah. you know there are days honestly I'll come home after having worked on mm -hmm. the shift and I am emotionally worn. Yes. Yeah. And and yet then I think about it. Well, you did some good today. You yeah. helped people out. And yeah. yes, sometimes um it it it's tough. Yes. But there's still that joy there to know that you you've helped somebody. Yes. You've been there yeah. for somebody. And and so it's a great thing to do. Um but it, it does. It helps us. It helps us grow. It does. I use the expression, it allows my heart to grow. Right, so right. That's a big part of it. I'd like to give you a few minutes to encourage someone, perhaps in our audience, that's considering becoming a volunteer. Uh, of course, we like folks in our local yes. area. Yes. But there are so many cancer centers throughout the United there States, are. and they all need volunteers. Yes. Your thoughts again sure. on, on take some time as much as you need on that. Sure. Well, I would just say, and let me just, you know, preface this by saying, even though we've talked about this, you don't have to have had an experience, a close experience with cancer to be a good right. volunteer here. Um, I tell people all the time, if you're willing to serve others, if you're willing to practice some good customer service skills, yeah. um, and if you're willing to... Uh, just share some smiles with people and, a, you know, a pat on the back or a handshake or something, um, then that's one of the big qualifications I have for people who work here. Um, I would encourage people to think about it just to not only, like, like we were saying, locally, you know, we have some needs at both Prattville and Montgomery uh, for volunteers. Uh, we do have a little process that you go through, but it's it takes just a couple of weeks to get that done. It's painless. It's painless. That's right. Well, I don't know now. I did have to get a couple of shots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just in general, um, you know, the things um, burden us sometimes are things that a different perspective can change that, that burden. And, you know, I... As I said, I just continue. To, I have experiences all the time where I get very focused on my little life at my in my family, in my home. And when I come here, it changes everything. And I think that anywhere you volunteer. Um, I for 35 years, five plus years, I've worked with volunteers in in different circumstances. And again, it doesn't matter the setting. It matters how you see things, how you, if you can serve, if you're willing to get out of yourself for a short time that day mm -hmm. and just focus on somebody else, your perspective will change and you will be a different person when you leave that day. Yeah, you, you truly are. And I, I talk to folks at our church. I've talked to some of our young people. Mm -hmm. um, I even wore my smock one day to go talk to our mm -hmm. teenagers saying, you know, think about this. This is a good way yeah. to, to learn and serve. Yes. Um, and I like what you said, that you don't have to have been a cancer victim to turn around right. 
all of us have skills and life experiences Absolutely. that help us with somebody. And so it's just a joy to be a volunteer. Well, and I'll, you know, just to plug for our Baptist Health System, you know, we have volunteers at our hospitals. Yeah. We have volunteers at our cancer center, different uh, different um, uh, outpatient facilities here. And, you know, we have volunteers, one of the... <laughs> I'm giving a plug for for our, one of our hospitals at the our Baptist East Hospital. The big thing is making teddy bears for new new babies, okay. and um, and so if you got sewing skills, you know we can find <laughs> a place for you to serve. Um, yeah. But I would just say get out there and look outside your circle and challenge yourself to do something that you've never done before. Be with people who are different than you are, yeah. and um, and go and and share. Well, uh, all the hospitals and healthcare agencies and all need volunteers. Yes. It doesn't have to be a cancer center. That's right. Uh, any of them. And, and all of them will have some office that they can contact to find out how to be a volunteer. Yes. And so it's not a, it's not a difficult process. Not you don't at all. need a specialized education. That's right. You're, you're just sharing life with a person. Absolutely. Them Absolutely. So, yeah. And I like that. People, um, the the patients are receptive to care. Yes. They they they're sometimes in pain, and yes. they're obviously sometimes uh, going through a sorrowful yes. situation. Yes, as is their family member. And yet, I've never come across a patient who was cross with me mm -hmm. or or anything like that because they know we're there to help. Right, right. And and so it's just a great atmosphere in which to serve. Absolutely. Okay, well, anything else? Oh, goodness. So, I, you know. Um, well, we could go for hours. Well, hours. I'll say this. You know, <laughs> one of my life verses I have right up here. Okay. It says, do justly, love mercy, walk humbly, Micah 6, 8. Okay, do justly, justly love mercy, mercy walk, walk humbly. humbly. To me, 6, 8. that is a great perspective to have yeah. in doing life. Yeah. Uh, even if you're not a believer. Yeah. Uh, and, um all three of those things to do justice to our patients, to love, be merciful to our patients, and to be humble. You know, in Matthew 25, our Lord's describing the judgment scene. Yeah. And uh, he says, you know, I was hungry and you mm -hmm. fed me. I was in prison and you visited with me. I was naked and you clothed me. And he goes on and then, well, when did we do that? And he said, well, you know, when you did it to those, yeah. you did it to me. That's and, right. And so what I try to teach people from that passage mm -hmm. is every one of the things that are listed there are things we can do. Absolutely. And so there's so much opportunity yeah. for us to help. Absolutely. It's such little ways. Everybody thinks you got to do great, grand, and wonderful things. And no. Right. That's right. No. It's, it's those little things. Absolutely. You know, um, Mother Teresa talks a lot about doing the small things. Yeah. Uh, because they lead to great things. They do. Yeah. They do. And you don't know. Mm -hmm. You just don't know if what you thought was a small thing wasn't, in yes. fact, a very big thing. Yes. So, yes. all right. Well, thank you for letting me come today. Oh, I'm excited. It was it was great. You were on my list of folks I wanted to talk um, and, and to get involved with this podcast yes. about hope. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Well, friends, thank you for joining us together as we journey to hope. I invite you to follow this podcast so you can continue to gain insights into not only our journey to hope, but how we can help others in their journey. I invite you to contact me if you have any questions or comments or you wish to share with me something you've experienced in your journey to hope. My email is ourjourneytohope at gmail.com. That's our journey and the number two, hope at gmail.com. I look forward to sharing more with you soon. Again, thank you for listening, and until our next episode, remember, we give all glory to God our Father.